Welcome to the Jordan and Kristen Rickard Show. The world is falling apart, but you don't have to. Join Jordan and Kristen as they discuss the challenges that face us in our decaying world every day. God has a plan for you to have victory and to be a light in the darkness. As the Bible says, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Now, here's Jordan and Kristen. All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Jordan and Kristen Pray for You. It's good to see you guys. We hope you guys are all doing really well. Thank you so much for all your kindness, all the support that you guys always show us. So today's message is really inspired by the uh, what they were terrorist attacks, let's be honest, on the United States Capitol building that occurred about a week ago. I was going to do this message back then, but I think sometimes it's better to just like Remove yourself a little bit from something and reflect more as opposed to just doing something immediately. Now, when the building was being attacked, I can tell you that Kristen and I, in fact, you can check on our page, uh, we interceded in prayer immediately. The video is still there. So I think when you're in the middle of something, that's what you do is you go and intercede. But afterwards, I think you have to reflect and also kind of analyze what happened, especially on a spiritual level. And here's what really came to me. Now, you guys have heard me talk a lot. Uh, on the show about the fruits of the Spirit, right? And what are the fruits of the Spirit? In other words, the things that God gives you by virtue of you accepting Christ into your life. He gives you nine things. He says, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, okay? First, remember, love, joy, and peace. That's like, those are the key ingredients to happiness. And so when people say, well, the Bible doesn't promise you happiness, like, well, actually, it pretty much does. Because if God is giving you love and joy and peace, what else do you really need for happiness, right? That's a good start. And the, the other ones, not just love, joy, peace, but but patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, those are all necessary to having love, joy, and peace. In fact, all nine of those are necessary to each other. And so those are what we call the fruits of the Spirit. Those are the things that when you kind of, when you give away your sinful life and you say, God, I want to commit myself to you, that's what God blesses you with, okay? Well, there's a flip side of that coin, okay? We talk about the fruits of the Spirit, but the Bible also talks about the fruits of the flesh, and obviously it's all in the same part. So you'll find all of this in Galatians 19. And listen to this. The fruits of the, of the flesh are, des- are described as this. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft. Okay, well, that's pretty obvious. But then check this out. And this is really what I want to focus on as far as, you know, the the capital tax and stuff and and really the the whole political and cultural climate. Okay, idolatry, witchcraft. But then listen, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension and factions, and envy. Doesn't that pretty much describe our entire political and cultural climate right now in America, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, and factions. I mean, look, you can say, well, look, only 70 people actually stormed into the Capitol building. Okay, 70 people went in. A lot of people stood outside and and did nothing about it. And a lot more uh, have voiced support for these people in, in social media and other places, okay? I mean, even the polling data, I think shows something like 20% of people refuse to condemn that. That's a lot of people in a population with 350 million, okay? And we've seen over the summer, and I don't like to draw equivalencies because I think when someone does something wrong, it's enough to say those people are responsible. I don't care what other people did. I care about what you did, okay? And so that's wrong. I also, But it's also important to notice that that's not just the only thing that's happening. We've had riots all summer in the United States, okay, um, You know, which you could easily, easily attribute to fits of rage, hatred, discord, uh, uh, dissensions, and factions, all right? They who live by the sword die by the sword. This idea that you are going to somehow riot yourself to a better world is, is, I think, absolutely nonsense, and it's totally inconsistent. When you see things like that, it's inconsistent with the Bible. When you see things like that, that is, you can't look at a scene like that. People running through the Capitol building, causing all kinds of destruction, smearing feces all over the place, trying to kidnap and, and hogtie uh, politicians or, or the stuff in the summer with people burning down buildings. You can't look at that and celebrate it. You, any reasonable person needs to look at that for what it is, which is um, basically the enemy just running wild and having a field day. And it's not the place of Christians either to, you know, to, to say, oh, 
you know, look at these people, they're just destroying it. Well, you know, fine, tear, burn your own city down. Or, you know, uh, they want to they attack the capital, fine, they're revolutionaries, whatever. Guys, it, it's the place of Christians always to oppose the enemy. And if you can't identify that as being the works of the enemy, then I don't know what to tell you, honestly. I think you're being, at that point, willfully blind to what's going on. And and self-deception uh, is, is a, a sin as well. And it's something that the Bible actually talks about how in the end times, and I don't, I'm not one of these revolution, you, you know, these people who think like Jesus is coming back tomorrow, we're in the end time. But the Bible talks about how, you know, we're going to trade, we're, the things that are good will be called evil, the things that are evil will be called good. And if you look at that sort of thing and you think that's anything other than the fruits of the spirit, fruits of the flesh, then I'm sorry, you're out of your mind. It's, that's just, that's what it is. And it's not just a handful of people, like I said, I don't just mean the 20%, but it's that, it's sort of like the, it's the consequence of this greater ethos, this greater ethos of dissension, of selfish ambitions, of jealousy, of fits of rage that just kind of go unchecked, of, of the sort of culture of, of inwardness and, and, uh, you know, violence. Um, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is simply this, guys. There is no in between here. Okay. You can choose one or you can choose the other, but you can't choose both. And one of these leads to destruction. The acts of the flesh was talking about sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions and factions, and envy, drunkenness, and orgies. And like, guys, that just leads to one thing. Okay. You want to see a society like that? We've seen it. And it's not, it's not something that's very desirable. If you're looking though for, if you're looking though for happiness, for fulfillment, okay, you have to adopt the fruits of the spirit. And that means crucifying the flesh. Okay. Jesus won the victory over it. And it's something you do every single day. It's not a switch that you flick. Okay. Every day, even someone like me, even someone like Kristen, we fight against, we fight against feelings of like jealousy. We fight against, you know, getting angry at somebody. We fight against dissension. We fight against even selfish ambitions because the enemy doesn't give up. And so it's not simply a matter of saying, okay, I choose this one over that one. It's I choose this one every single day. And even if I trip tomorrow, I'm going to get back up. I'm going to do even better. I'll close with this. I was coming to Kristen's house today. It's Sunday right now as we're recording this. I'm just kind of looking forward to a day off and just relaxing. But I said, you know, just as I was coming up here, I said, Kristen, I pray that even today is a day of growth because the enemy doesn't take days off. Okay. And so even though, yeah, we're having a good time at her house, I'm just, we're just kind of relaxing and taking it easy. Okay. We've also actually done a lot of growing today, wouldn't you say? I think so. Yeah. We've done a lot of growing today and in good ways. Not that, you know, not that we had an argument, we're not arguing, nothing like that, but just deep conversations and learning more about each other and just kind of pushing forward and just being committed to every day, choosing not to get in and getting, not to give in to those, those, the Bible says like fleshly impulses, but just, you, you know what it is. It's, it's that, it's just the negative impulse inside of you. And instead saying, God, God, I want rather what you have for me. In fact, just last night, you know, I was, uh, becoming impatient with somebody. Uh, I was talking to this person and I was just becoming a little bit impatient. I was like, no, Jordan, exercise patience. Watch. And I was out. I, I decided, okay, I'm going to be patient now. And I found myself actually enjoying the conversation. I was like, since the patience, pushed away the negativity, and now I was enjoying that person's company. And that's really the key to life here, guys, is to choose good over evil and to call out evil and intercede against it when you see it. That's my message for you today. So good. So good. And I love what you said. Well, everything you said, but yes, we know that no man knows the hour. We don't know the exact day that God is coming back. But whether that's a thousand years from now, we can see that we are in the end times in terms of what's going on. You look in your Bible and what is predicted uh, in the Bible and what's going on now. And so it's exciting. It's not a time to say, oh, this is so, yes, it's a time to grieve what's happening, but it's also a time, a call to action that God put you and I and Jordan and I on this earth for a reason to make that difference. And he called us on at this particular yeah, moment. I think when, when people talk about end times, they get hung up thinking like, End times means the last five years before the earth is doomed or something. I don't really interpret it that way. I think when, when God, when Jesus talks about the end times, he's even talking about the period of time that he's in in the That's New right. Testament. That 2000 years ago, you know, uh, if, if you read that, he's, he's talking about what would sound to us like apocalyptic things back then. And so I don't really think of it as necessarily, uh, 
a period of time the way we think of it, but rather so much as a, a stage really in sort of, you know, human progression or regression, I yeah, suppose. And the Bible says, you know, the day, a day is like a thousand years. And so right. it's just all relative, but it's the point is when we look at all this stuff, the tendency is to say, oh my gosh, you know, the world is doomed. But instead to have that intercessory to go in prayer, like, and to realize that God has called you for a specific time such as this. And um, I love what you said about all those things. You know, you just kind of feel it with, you feel it in the Holy Spirit. It, and that's a good meter, you know, test and see the spirits. And that's a pretty obvious one when, when it's the flesh versus the spirit. There's obvious things and then there's things that you feel in the spirit and use your discernment. But those things are very obvious and to uh, as far as glorifying the flesh or the spirit. Amen. Absolutely. All right, baby. Thanks for thanks for uh, everything you do for us, first of all. Um, I really appreciate everything you do. And uh, thank you for making my life so special. Aww. And I would just like if you would please pray for all these beautiful people out here. Absolutely. Well, thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Yes. Oh, Lord, we thank you that nothing is impossible for you. God, how often do we say, oh, Lord, we need this or we need a miracle. And then you deliver. And it's human nature just to forget what you just did. God, help us always, Lord, we remember our remembrance stones of what you've done and what you will do. And it's so easy to look at the world, to look at certain things going on and say, oh, this just looks like hopeless in, um, from a human perspective. But God, you called us for such a time as this, just like you called Esther, just like you called Deborah, just like you called Joseph, just like you called so many in the Bible. And just like Peter, you say, on this rock, I will build my church. I believe that there are so many out there today that every person listening is meant to be a pillar, a pillar, God, that without them, a huge, huge hole is missing. And, and the foundation of your word is meant to stand upon. So God, help every one of us to realize how significant we are, how valued we are, how loved we are by you. Give us clarity. Give us your spirit. Give us your Holy Spirit and let us use every single day and make it count. Make it count in our lives, in our marriages, in our home and with those who have kids and those who are in students and all different walks of life. Let us be the influence you want us to be and to make it count. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good job. All right. All right. Who we have to pray for tonight? Okay. So we've got some prayer requests, which we love. Uh, Rike says, touch my family, Lord. Celso says, pr is asking for prayer. Sayez is asking for, uh, has a stomach problem. Isabella is asking for her daughter. Tamara says, Lord, touch my family. Melanie, family protection. Alona, family. Jeff prays for our nation. Solomon, Praise for his church ministry, social networking in the in the villages, and financial help. Donna's son is working in D.C., in Washington, D.C., as a Christian, having to make uh, difficult decisions. And Sivan just asked for prayers. So, God, we lift up every single one of these people to you, God. For those who just asked for prayer, like Celso and Sivan, and Sivan Lord, we know that you know what they're, they're facing, God, and you, they don't face it alone. You go before them and fight the battle for them. Touch Rike's family. Touch Isabel, uh, Isabel's daughter and her whole family. Touch Saez's stomach, Lord, and, and touch Tamara's family and, and Melanie's family and Al Alona's family. And as Jeff prays, touch our nation, God. Touch Solomon and their ministry, God, and Donna's son working in DC. Be with all these Beautiful, precious souls, God, and give them all. I just ask for an extra blessing, an extra dose, an extra surprise, an extra God wink, an extra encouragement for each and one of these people and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Great job, baby. Great job. All right. All right. Well, this is the point where we want to ask you, if you want to get a chance to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there's never been a better opportunity than right now. So just follow after me and uh, we will do that. Dear Jesus, I admit that I have sinned. 
I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I make you my Lord and Savior. And I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we're so excited. Send us a message or you can comment on the video. You You guys like how by the end of these things, like I'm like one third off the screen. Like I know we started somewhere in the middle and then by the end it's like I'm over here and you can see my left eyeball and that's it. You were made for the camera is what this is about. No, you were made for the camera. All right. All right, guys. Well, listen, it's good to see you. Hope you guys have a great week. We'll be back soon. In the meantime, as always, be blessed and be a blessing. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to follow Jordan and Kristen Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and iTunes. And remember to tune in next week and every week on Tuesdays at 845 on WMCA The Mission, AM 570 and FM 102.3. Amazing grace.